I've been using the iPhone 14 Pro Max as my main phone for the past six months, and in short, it's great. I'm almost always pleased with the results when I snap a photo, the A16 Bionic chip can keep up with whatever I'm doing, and the battery will easily last me through a day of heavy use, commuting, or just streaming shows. But with the Galaxy S23 Ultra having launched, there is real competition in the market. Not to mention, the iPhone 15 series is on the way. And so, is the iPhone 14 Pro Max a good purchase right now? And are there better options you should be looking into? Or should you save your money for now and wait for the new iPhone 15 Pro in the fall? I'm going to break it down all for you and help you figure it out. First up, let's chat about the main reason people are usually willing to spend upwards of a grand on a phone, the cameras. The cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro Max are superb. The 48 megapixel main sensor is a huge step up for Apple, offering far more detail in images when shooting in the RAW format. Most people won't need all that detail though, and by default, the sensor will group every four pixels in a quad pixel and optimize for better light capture in 12 megapixel photos. It all results in stunning pictures no matter the environment, from nighttime shots outside to dimly lit bars. Just point, shoot, and you'll be surprised by how much detail the iPhone can retain in your scene. And in less challenging scenarios, the iPhone often comes up on top with more pleasing colors and dynamic range, resulting in more social media ready images without the need for editing. The iPhone is still undoubtedly the king when it comes to video on a smartphone, with its 4K resolution in its cinema mode and action mode that offers stabilization that the competition simply can't keep up with. The iPhone 14 Pro Max offers the best pocket video camera money can buy. So overall, we really like the, the video from the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And one of the features that we're testing out right now is the action mode. So it goes up to 2.8K. Part of the reason for that is that it's cropping the video as we go. So you're not getting the full 4K resolution, but you are getting super steady action as both the shooter and the subject are moving at the same time. One area where Apple is way behind the competition is telephoto zoom lenses. The Galaxy S23 Ultra crushes the iPhone with its 200 megapixel sensor, 10 times optical zoom, 30x digital zoom, and 100x space zoom. Yes, you lose some quality when using digital zoom, but at least you have the option to snap a long range shot and read that sign or see that landmark from afar. Thankfully, it appears that the iPhone 15 Pro Max should be catching up in a major way. Rumor has it that the iPhone 15 Pro Max will boast a periscope zoom lens with 6x optical zoom, a big jump from the 3x telephoto camera on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It still may not match the Galaxy S23 Ultra, but we expect a boost in digital zoom too. Just don't expect a 100x zoom on the iPhone 15 Pro. Let me know in the comments, do you care about how far your camera phone can zoom? Do expect improvements across the board when it comes to the cameras and their integrations with Apple's next generation A17 Bionic chip. I'd expect even better low light performance and other upgrades, but I'd also expect those improvements to be marginal. If you're looking for an amazing camera phone and you're locked into the Apple ecosystem, then the iPhone 14 Pro Max is an amazing choice. And I don't think you'll experience too much FOMO when the iPhone 15 Pro launches. But if you're looking for the absolute best and most versatile smartphone camera available, the S23 Ultra is our recommendation right now. The iPhone 14 Pro Max has some of the best battery life available and in our Tom's Guide battery test, it lasted an average of 13 hours and 39 minutes surfing the web over 5G. That outperforms the S23 Ultra, which went dead around 30 minutes quicker, even though it technically has a larger battery. Since launch, the iPhone 14 Pro Max has lasted me through the day without a problem, but the always on display does drain power. So how much better could the iPhone 15 Pro Max be? The new three nanometer A17 Bionic chip is said to be as much as 35% more power efficient compared to the A16 Bionic. So this will almost certainly result in an even longer runtime. Unfortunately, the iPhone 14 Pro Max lags behind the industry standard with 20 watt charging. When charging a drained iPhone 14 Pro Max, you'll get just 42% in 30 minutes. Other phones like the Galaxy S23 Ultra gets to 58% in 30 minutes with its 45 watt charger, and the OnePlus 11's 80 watt charger can get to 100% in a half hour. We're hoping that Apple will do better this year and introduce faster charging as it ditches the lightning port and reluctantly implements a USB-C port instead. The EU is mandating that Apple embrace USB-C by the end of 2024, and Apple has admitted that it will comply. 
the leaks point to Apple delivering USB-C for all iPhone 15 devices launching this year, though it's possible that Apple could reserve faster transfer speeds for the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. One rumored scenario is that Apple will only guarantee the fastest charging speeds and transfer speeds if an Apple-certified USB-C cable or accessory is used, which could cause a lot of backlash. Regardless, we can anticipate faster charging over USB-C with the iPhone 15 Pro Max versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and we'll have to see about transfer speeds when it comes to connecting things like cameras or external devices. This is a case of Apple catching up to the competition for sure, but it will be a welcome upgrade. There's nothing wrong with the iPhone 14 Pro Max's stainless steel sides, but we're excited for the rumors that the next iPhone could be making use of a titanium alloy body. Titanium is super strong while weighing less than aluminum, so it should result in an overall lighter big screen phone from Apple. Well, provided the new Periscope Zoom doesn't add too much weight. Another positive rumor has the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max getting more rounded edges, which should make the handset more comfortable to hold. Some users have complained about the sharper squared off edges of the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max, which can dig into your hands. I for one am looking forward to an iPhone 15 Pro Max that weighs down my pocket less, and while Apple is at it, I'd like to see better scratch resistance. After six months, I've seen several appear on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, even though I carry it only in my pocket or a backpack in its own pocket with nothing else in it. Although I guess that probably sells more cases. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is an incredible phone, and you'll likely not be disappointed if you go out and purchase one tomorrow. But if you're after the very best camera phone, then I think you might be better off going for the Galaxy S23 Ultra. If you're locked into Apple, but USB-C, a better zoom, and even better performance are important to you, then you should hang on for the fall and see what the iPhone 15 Pro lineup has in store for us. If you're really on a budget, you might want to wait for the iPhone 15 series to launch, at which point the iPhone 14 Pro Max will go on a heavy discount. Regardless of what happens though, 2023 is going to be a big year of change for Apple, and I can't wait to see if the iPhone 15 Pro Max lives up to the hype. If you're looking for an even deeper dive on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, then check out my review of the phone when it first launched on the Tom's Guide YouTube channel. Will the iPhone 15 Pro live up to the hype? Stay tuned for all of our coverage of the rumors and leaks leading all the way up to my iPhone 15 Pro Max review. I'm Mark Spoonauer, and I'll see you in the next video.